Hello everybody, welcome to Oscar Rusty Buckus. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already and drop a like on this video. I'm trying to hit 100k subscribers on the channel by the end of the year, so your subscription would be much appreciated. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second and makes a massive difference. So, uh, Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic just had a phenomenal game. Uh, I, these boots might look comically large on this camera from this angle because it's like weird with my body proportions, so if I look like I'm wearing clown shoes, I apologize. But uh, I just had to say that. Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid just had their first matchup of the season, which is one of the many unfortunate things about the existence of conferences is that matchups like this only happen twice a year, and that's if everybody's healthy for it. But uh, this was part of Rivalry Week, and my God, is this one of the best NBA games I have watched in a while. I'm going to split this video kind of up into two halves. It's the same video, but first half of this video, I'm going to talk about um, just this game. And then after that, I want to talk about the narrative stuff following it. Because I knew from the get-go, regardless of result in this game, unless both of these players just have a very, like, objectively or as close to it can be equal performance there's no way there's not going to be some toxic 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 discourse after this that's just the very nature of the nba but if you have been around the realm of nba twitter which if you have no i'm sorry soldier you've had a rough time uh because good lord it's terrible and there is everything just becomes a turf war and the way that it works is essentially if a player has a good game in a matchup and the other one has an okay game suddenly that player is better because and what the voices you're going to hear and part of it's algorithmic but the voices you're going to hear are those people who wanted to say something and now because this player had a big game they they have a reason to say something no one's putting out their propaganda for Joel Embiid on a game where he has 20 points on 35 percent shooting like the game i watched the other day but if he has 47 and 18 and 5 that's a different conversation it's just the nature of things so we'll talk about that i already kind of did but Right now, I just want to talk about basketball because I'm not going to let that ruin this experience for me. As tempting as it was, me years ago definitely would have. But I have, at least hopefully in theory, matured enough to not let uh, dumb narratives dispel my enjoyment of the game. Which I definitely used to do. But from a pure basketball standpoint, really couldn't have enjoyed, enjoyed this game more. And that's as someone who's definitely much more of a Jokic fan than a Joel Embiid fan. Um, I still love Joel Embiid when he goes off because, I mean, he's just a fun player. I don't know what to say. I like when big men hit pull-up jumpers. It's a very weirdly specific thing. But if you're a big man and you do off-the-dribble mid-range shots, I'm really entertained by you very often. It's the same way I feel about Bam Adebayo. I've consistently been a pretty big fan of his just because, like, he has the smoothest-looking pull-up jump shot of any five that I have seen. Um, at least right now. Uh, it's a weird offside tangent, but there you go. Um, Joel Embiid had 47, 18, and 5. As I said earlier in this one, it might have actually been a little bit more than that, but that was his stats uh, with like a minute left, I think. Um, something like that, somewhere in that ballpark. And yeah, what a performance. I don't know what else to say. He had ended it off, of course, with a, I guess, more, I don't know if it was more of a sidestep or a step back three on Nikola Jokic at the top of the key. And sometimes you can just tell it's like the same body language that LeBron has right before he's taking the Le FU threes, censoring myself for YouTube revenue. Um, it's the same body language. You can kind of tell, like, looks down at the ground, dribbling a little, little bit different of a way. And it's like, yeah, he's going to pull that. I could tell the moment he caught the ball. And the way the game was going, I felt like it was going to go in. I'm not going to do the LeBron thing and say I knew it was going in, but I knew he was taking that shot. That much I could tell just from the way that he was moving. And that shot really just kind of encapsulated the entire night. Uh, he was hitting jump shot after jump shot. Ironically, after the first quarter, he had missed a couple of them. And I tweeted out that uh, Joel takes too many jump shots. Not by a significant margin, but I think it'd be better if he was uh, more of an interior presence. Like, I don't think it's un like mentioned enough that I think Joel Embiid has like 30% of his shots at the rim. Which I think for someone who's as talented on the inside, that's not... That's a underselling a little bit. I think he'd be a little bit more interior-minded. But that said, 
as soon as I said that, he could not miss a jump shot this entire game from mid-range or from three. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was very clear he had a chip on his shoulder. It was very clear he had a point to prove. I would argue there were parts of this game that felt borderline petty, which kind of always comes along with Joel Embiid. He is a very petty person and he is very expressive on the floor. But in this, it, I know, I love it. It's, it sounds like I'm criticizing him. Don't take it as criticism. Criticism. I enjoy when players play like that, you know, when they can back it up. It's annoying when they can't, but when they can talk all the shit you want, I'm going to enjoy it. I enjoyed the way he played this game. Nikola Jokic came in with a pretty standard Nikola Jokic performance, but really what shifted the, the tide in this game was that Philly went to a different defensive scheme from what they were doing earlier. I couldn't pinpoint exactly when this switch happened. I would say probably somewhere towards the end of the third quarter or maybe middle of the third quarter, but they started putting Tobias Harris and or PJ Tucker on Nikola Jokic and having Joel Embiid guard Aaron Gordon. Um, I think a couple of times he was guarding Bruce Bowen. Two players not particularly known for their three ball. Aaron Gordon's actually having a really good year from three this year. But, like, I'd argue it's kind of like in the Al Farouk Amino sense of having a good season. Where, yes, he's shooting well, but I don't actually believe he's like that as a three-point shooter. And you're, the defense is still not losing sleep over an open AG3. And it's worth it, the possibility of giving up something like that, which I don't believe they did a single time, uh, because it allows Joel Embiid to be a roamer. And any time Nikola Jokic would start to take advantage of his size against Tobias or PJ, uh, suddenly, it, it, I think it was James Harden a few times too, who you do, no one can mess with in the post. That's the one thing he does amazing as a defensive player. Um, but... Uh, there were a couple times where Jokic tried to take advantage, but Joel Embiid was just able to rotate over and without giving up a clear passing lane because, of course, Jokic would find that every time. And then suddenly the offense would kind of fall into a scramble. There, I will say, I do think there was more Jokic could have done to attack the size disadvantage. But also, like, P.J. Tucker and Tobias, for what it's worth, post-defense is not just about how tall you are. Uh, Tobias is pretty strong and PJ Tucker is really strong and really good at post defense and just moving them is not the easiest thing in the world. That said, Nikola Jokic, uh, I think could have stood to be more aggressive in this game, especially if he has any care in the world for his MVP case. I think Joel Embiid came into this game, like thinking that this was important for the MVP race and Jokic really didn't. And I think Jokic should be right, but it's not always the case. Um, quickly, before I move on to that side of things, though, I want to talk about everybody else. Although, the statement matchup here is those two. Jamal Murray also had a fantastic game. Um, I believe James Harden was cool, but other than that, there was no contribution from any other sixer that I thought was that significant. Other than, I guess, Georges Niang, who I think hit four three-pointers. Um, and yelled at Shake Milton for five minutes and got in his face. That was interesting. The battle of mid. Um, but yeah, uh, on, so that's the Sixers side of things. And on the Nuggets side of things, I just kept thinking about, obviously they lost this game, and I guess I can quickly talk about the series of events. The Nuggets probably should have won this game, but the defensive switch that the Sixers did, which credit to Doc Rivers for a good defensive scheme, but also credit to Joel Embiid for how phenomenal he is as soon as he's allowed to be a roamer rather than a one-on-one -on -one defender. Some losers would argue that Joel was hiding from that matchup, but play the best defensive scheme that you can do, not whatever. Yeah, you get what I mean. Um, that kind of started to turn the tides because the Denver Nuggets offense that was firing in all cylinders before really was starting to struggle and having possessions come down to late clock and someone just kind of has to throw something up, which is far from ideal. Uh, but before things went bad, uh, I was just thinking to myself, like this Denver Nuggets starting lineup, obviously they lost, but I'm still going to say something positive. Uh, this lineup is not anywhere close to the most talented lineup I've ever seen, but I do think it's one of the best I've ever seen purely because the fit couldn't be better. 
these I would say KCP is a good starter. Michael Porter Jr. is a good to great starter. Aaron Gordon is a great starter. <laughs> Jamal Murray's been inconsistent because of injury, but probably a great starter. So yeah, it's a lot of great starters and then like a superstar. But like I don't think there's another all star on this roster right now, and yet this offense is as good as it is just with that starting five. Their starting five, I think, has one of the best offensive ratings of any lineup in basketball. Anyways, so that's my thoughts on the actual game. Let me quickly move on to the narrative stuff. I'm just kind of going to kind of, you know, summarize what I already made a Twitter thread about. Um, I think individual game matchups for MVP races matter. Uh, right now, Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid, if you're not aware, are top two on the MVP ladder. So when I say that these were the top two candidates, that's what I mean. I don't necessarily know if Joel Embiid has, st has moved past um, Tatum and Luka for me yet. Uh, although I do think I did not value him enough in that conversation. I think I overstated how many games he had missed because otherwise his case was rock solid. When I say they're the top two candidates, that's what I mean. They're the top two on the NBA's ladder. So I would understand if these two being neck and neck like that, if you feel like they are neck and neck, that this might swing your opinion. However, if you were like pretty on the Jokic side and then this game moved you to the Embiid side, I think that's a weak-ass reason. And frankly, I don't think many p people will do that. I think uh, individual matchups and MVP races and just when talking about comparing plays or players in general is way overrated. Because, like, for example, one common take that I would hear back in the day was that Kyrie Irving was better than Stephen Curry because when they would match up in the finals... Kyrie would outplay him. Now, I don't think that's true, but even if it was, you know, I do think it's a lot closer than it probably should be. It's a lot... Uh, Kyrie definitely performs better against Steph than normal. Um, at least in those years he did. But um, the argument that Kyrie is a better player because of a couple of finals games or even when they're just talking about the regular season matchup, like just because a player is better versus another player, that doesn't mean that's the better player. It means that's the better player when they play each other. But there are 28 other teams in the league that the, that other player plays against. I said player way too many times. But one game or two games, or if they're in the same conference, Four, I think sometimes it can be five, although I might just be stupid. Uh, that amount of games should not determine this award. If it nudges it in Embiid's way, which I would say that it does, that's totally cool. It should. Embiid killed it this game. This is just an amazing performance period. Even just take away the fact that Nikola Jokic was on the other side, this should move Joel Embiid up the ladder. But just because he definitely won this matchup by, I would say, a pretty significant margin, um, regardless of that being the case, it's one game at the end of the day. And I, I'm, I'm fine with it having some more significance because of who it's against, but the award is about who has the best year. Who's the best against the entire league? Not about who's best against the Nuggets for Embiid or who's best against the Sixers for Nikola Jokic. That said, I want to throw this at the end here. These two players are about to be um, the top two candidates in the, the world for MVP right now. They're going to be the top two seeds possibly because if the Celtics lose today I think the Sixers are tied and the six and the Celtics have not been as rock solid lately still good but not as not as good as they were um and Philly just refuses to lose so about to be two MVP caliber bigs as the top one seeds in each conference uh I think two of the three best records if I'm not mistaken um that's pretty cool and I guess pretty retro because I'm thinking like when's the last time that happened it was the last time two bigs were the top two guys interesting to think about but with that all being said I do uh I also want to throw out there this what the other thing I was going to say wouldn't this be an awesome finals matchup I'm kind of pulling for it at this point like 
If we got Embiid versus Jokic in the finals, dude, I mean, it'd be narrative hell regardless of where it goes. 